The member from Hennepin, Representative Zellers. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And uh, uh, like Representative Dean, I'll be brief. You know, for too many years, we've talked about these kind of reforms and uh, th that are needed for some of our safety net programs so that not only can they be maintained for those that need them the most, but that they can also be affordable for the taxpayers who are paying for them. You know, we knew some of these programs wouldn't last, that, that this was going to come a day. We're this close on the reforms. The people who've worked so hard on this to come up with a fix are being short-circuited here today. Members, we can do better. We need to do better. We must do better. You know, we'd starting reforming these programs with Representative Dean and Murphy was working in a bipartisan way, understanding full well that maintaining the programs for those that need them the most would also mean then that we were going to have to give up some maybe on our, each of our own sides some things that we hold most sacred. And members, not for one minute here today do I believe that anyone in this room does not want to find a solution for those that need it the most. I will not question your motives. I will not question your morality. I will not question your commitment to solving this problem. But members, we need to find ideas that work. We need to find a solution to, that works. I took Representative Murphy at her word when she said that this is an imperfect solution that we're sending out of here, that it would indeed include more work, work to be done on the bill, more compromise to be had by both sides. Representative Dean and Murphy and Huntley were here all weekend, part of the negotiations up until last night. Representative Murphy documented so well in her memo. To come here today, Representative Bly, is to slap away that hand of trust. I agree with the speaker. Trust is earned. I think Representative Murphy, Abler, Huntley, Dean, Gottwald, Thiessen earned each other's trust and they worked in a bipartisan manner over the summer, over the fall, over the winter. But that hand of trust was slapped away today by this vote. That earned trust goes by the wayside in the work that Representative Magnus has worked on with veterans to somehow accuse folks who may or may not vote to override the governor of not caring about those folks. Bipartisan work that Representative Magnus and many members of this body worked on. To deny that is to deny the work that we've all done in a bipartisan manner on behalf of our veterans. So, Madam Speaker, I'm not going to belabor the point. I agree with you that a signed bill is better than an overridden. I believe that Representative Murphy and Dean and Abler, Gottwald, all the folks in the health care cluster, as well as all of us on the House floor, can come to a solution. And I'll, uh, I'll leave by sharing something that a friend shared with me this morning. Uh, if we're going to work in a bipartisan manner, we're going to have to come across the aisle, join hands, so to speak. So, Madam Speaker, I ask that you hold hands and not grudges. The maker, Representative Sertich. We have to be honest with ourselves today. We have to be honest with ourselves with the choices that are presented before us. So, Anderson, I'm very much considering the words you say and talking about the two choices that are before us. Neither perfect. You're absolutely right. But members, we have to be honest with ourselves today that these are the two choices that were before us when the governor vetoed the program last May, that were before us for the nine months of negotiations and thoughtfulness on members from both sides of the aisle. These two choices were before us when we took a vote on this bill last week or a week before. They're the two choices that members worked on this weekend. 
And they're still the two choices we have before us today. I wish there were a third way. I wish in the next month before this basic health care is taken away from Minnesotans that there could magically be a third way that somehow bridged the divide between these two solutions. Members, we have to be honest with ourselves. There is not. We are each trying to do the best we can for all Minnesotans, and especially these Minnesotans. That's why people on both sides of the aisle, and I have a great deal of respect for those in a very complicated area of our state budget, have invested the time and energy, not just over the weekend, not just this session, but since last year, members of the administration, members on both sides of the aisle, sitting down, pouring over each and every idea they could to come up with the best option available. And we're down to two. We have to be honest with ourselves that there's not going to be a third option. I wish there was. But in life, in exhausting all these ideas, exhausting all this time, we've come down to two options. And we're out of time. We can talk about this for another month as software is changing and notices are going out, we're already headed down that road of one of the two choices. And the administration is not turning that ship around. They've told us as much. And we can talk about it more and more over this next month, but it's going to boil down to these two choices. And that's why we're out of time. We need to be honest with ourselves about that. We can delay this vote today, we can put it off, but the choices don't get any easier. It's the option before you today, which is less expensive and covers more people, or it's going down this other path, more expensive, less time, less health care. I wish we could find long-term solutions. I'm sure those that are homeless, those veterans that are living under those bridges are looking for long-term solutions as well. But they're also looking for the short-term solution too. And unless they make the short-term solution to live for today, they don't reach a long-term solution. And that's why I applaud Representative Murphy, Huntley, Thiessen, Dean, Abler, Governor Pawlenty, Commissioner Ludeman, and their staff for pouring their hearts and souls into finding solutions that work. But Representative Anderson and others, there are only two. I wish there were more. I want to commend this entire body for a respectful discussion today. There's a lot of talk about politics versus personality, politics versus policy. The word politic is Greek. It means people. And that's what we're voting on today. I've seen the signs, I've seen the letters that say, save G-A-M-C. Members, we're not saving a program. We're talking about saving people's lives. So I think we each have to take a moment here before we vote and be honest with ourselves. Do you honestly think if we wait another day, week, or month that there will be another solution that comes before us? I wish there were, but we have nine months of proof that that is not the case.
because it comes down to these two options. We are going to have a budget forecast tomorrow. It's going to tell us one of three things. We have more money than we thought, we have less money than we thought, or it's about the same. That does not change my opinion, nor should it change your opinion on doing the right thing for these people. This decision will be before us tomorrow after the forecast. It's the exact same decision. And folks have said there's a lot of emotion in this, and there should be. If we made decisions as people, in government, without emotion, we're just computers. We could enter in the data and spit it out. I'm glad we don't do that. I'm glad we have vigorous debates. I'm glad we care. We all care. So I hope we all understand the implications of the votes we take. If I were appealing to your head, I would say it's an economic choice. It's a choice to do something. Voting yes is a choice to do something that costs less money and covers more people. If I was appealing to your heart, I would tell you that we're standing up for veterans, other homeless Minnesotans, showing compassion. I guess, members, I appeal to both your head and your heart. Let's be honest. We are down to two choices. I was home this weekend and I talked to someone who has a very good friend who is on general assistance medical care, who has cancer. And the only way they get treatment is by going in and getting a shot, a shot that costs $3,000. And I don't know a lot about health care policy. I'll be the first to admit it. And if we're all honest in this room, most of us could say the same thing. And this is why I'm supporting this motion. Because this homeless person is supposedly going to get a letter to say they're going to be enrolled for a small amount of time in Minnesota care. Members, how do we send out letters to homeless Minnesotans to tell them their health care is changing? That's the other option before us today. How are they going to receive that letter? Suffering from mental illness or chemical dependency, how are they going to figure that out? They're not. Let's be honest, they're not. This is uncomfortable, members, because we all know the pressure we're under. We hear from folks back home and what the right thing to do is. And no one can tell you that except yourself. I subscribe to the same philosophy that many of you do that Representative Ward spoke of. Voting first with your conscience, then your communities, and then your caucus. I suppose as a caucus leader, that's probably an unwise thing to say this early in session. but it comes down to being honest with yourselves. Do you honestly think things are going to change in the next month, that a third option is going to magically appear that wasn't seen by any of these smart people that have been working on this for the past year? It won't. This is it. So I'd encourage a yes vote for Minnesotans. I'd encourage a yes vote for 